Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 82 of Ape Warrior Podcast with Chia Boys, Carlos Arespes. Carlos, how you doing? Uh, sick as hell. <laughs> uh, hang it in there. I'm going to say I'm really mouthy because I, I can't breathe out of my nose. So yeah. You get the dulcet tones of uh, here today. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, there you go. Um, I'm Man, also. There's no reason why I did the Jeff Hardy dance. You know? Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. This episode, yeah. I mean, you may or not see some stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, well, it's, got some, it's been well, out there for got weeks. Some deep pockets, just saying. <laughs> it's been out there for weeks. He he yeah, literally yeah, spoiled it while he was still there. Musically te- speaking, <laughs> he, uh, Tony Khan's got some oh, deep yeah, pockets. Yeah. 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 I, I, I only, you had to pay Vince for that one. I didn't see it when it happened, but I seen it in person. They probably changed like one little note out of it. No, um. <laughs> no exact same um, party boys theme. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spoil that right now. Exact same. I'm curious if they own it, like the Hardys do. You know what I mean? I'm curious if there's <sighs> like it, it's cool. it's possible. I, I don't know. If like they has been yeah. using it from them, kind of thing. Well, I, don't. I will say the this is not. We're not going into the episode. Just talking about Jeff Hardy. Yeah. I want to just make this point. I last year. You know, you saw the writing. On, well, funny and pun intended. I saw the writing on the walls, and I, I did not. When he came back with uh, what's the name of the song? I literally just mentioned it. I don't know the actual name of the song. Yeah. I can't remember it. His theme. Right. No more words. Right. No more words. Yeah. Uh, I was so bummed out because <laughs> for the longest time I wanted WWE to, to use it. Right. And then uh, you saw the writing on the walls. I was like, well, he's not going to stay with WWE long. He's going to go to AEW and have his brothers there. Yeah. Or they depended on like, oh, don't use it. Don't use it. And he came out to it. I was like, oh, we're never going to get this song again. We're only going to get it for like a year of fucking <laughs> WWE main <laughs> event. <laughs> Fuck. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and it's like, it's not yeah. even like Hardy sung it. He sung right. it live. And he has a beautiful singing voice. So maybe, I don't know, maybe Tony Khan can do that. Be like, it's a cover. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, like I said, just I, the shit I don't know out. the ins and outs of that stuff, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just bummed. But, yeah. Bummed <laughs> have no more words. Um, okay. Well, like you said, this is not a Jeff Hardy episode. I'm going to yeah. try to keep us on track here a little bit. Uh, we kind of have like a two for like you said before the episode it is kind of a slow news week there's not like anything huge to talk about so we're going to kind of split it a little bit we'll focus more on the one but we will start off with something you didn't even know what was happening i mean it's really it's, it's kind of like a controversy I, i've seen all over twitter a lot of people complaining um so we'll go to revolution where for those of you who did not see it I'm assuming you at least seen this part by now. Uh, CM Punk came out to his old ROH music in his old ROH gear. Uh, the stuff that he wore against Raven when they had a dog collar match. Um, and a lot of people were kind of upset and still are because they, they're they mad. And, and see, and, and here, I have a lot to say about this bit of it they're upset that the announcers did not explain it that there is no precursor to explain it um excalibur did a great job but like because like when it was happening the music played for a little bit and i can i can i can sympathize a little bit but what a lot of people said and this is true for wrestling for so long especially hardcore fans have been treated like they're dummies yes uh that AEW, the one thing they do is they bring guys in, they're like, oh, wow, he's from New Japan, and we know it's a big deal. And do casuals know? No. But AEW's always been about the hardcore fan over the casual fan. It's like an homage to people who pay attention to wrestling. So, for you to be upset about that, AEW does this all the time. And for them to not fully explain it, guess what? I did not know what CM Punk's ROH's theme was. When I heard the theme going off, I'm sitting there laughing and saying to Jess, I'm saying, he's going to come out in his ROH gear. I said, I have no idea if this is his ROH music, but I'm assuming this is his ROH music since this has only been about literally MJF like gave his like half of the speech that ROH uh, that um, CM Punk gave in ROH. Like yeah. all that. Well, how come nobody complained about all that? 
they didn't say, oh, well, MJF said the same thing as CM Punk. You know what I mean? None of that stuff got brought up before. No, hell, they were praising him. Yeah. They were literally praising him. Like I was because of that whole lot. You yeah. stupid old man. Yeah. And, and, the snake. <laughs> and it's the same thing. It was CM Punk against Raven. Like, it was the same. It literally just transitioned to now them two. And that's what this whole thing has been about. And I know a lot of people, and I guess maybe people are like, well, I didn't need to know the original to appreciate what MJF said. And okay, but MJF said it because that's what CM Punk said. No different yeah. than they played that music because that was CM Punk's music. You just didn't know. That's fine. But yeah. to get all upset about it is like a little ridiculous to me. Listen, to be fair, I, I'm with you. Did not even know that was his ROH thing. And I'm, I'm a big CM Punk fan. And I've seen ROH stuff, but I guess the stuff I've seen has been like tailored to cut that music out. Right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And me too. Yeah. Whenever you watch the old stuff, if they don't have rights to certain music and stuff like that, you yeah, you almost get like the, not to like I'm already legally put in the ROH. Right. Like I'm, I'm not even talking about ROH proper, but like like someone posted like the best like CM Punk matches. I'm like halfway through a match and I'm seeing like some of his best moments. So I've I've the shorts, the jacket, and all that was classic to me. I knew right. that did not know in a damn way that <laughs> afi was like that and i shout out to jeremy in our text conversation because and shout out to mark because i was this is a preview i'll give you right so it's sunday as i mentioned i'm sick sunday was like the worst of it i was sick as shit so i was like you know what i don't know if i'm gonna buy this last minute mark from entrance ramp or got mark 76 we, we should entrance ramp is dead you know <laughs> it's fucking dead <laughs> uh, but it's deader than Lars Sullivan's career. But what, what we're going to talk about is Got Mark 76 is he just launched a Patreon. Shout out to you, Mark. He makes custom, you know, wrestlers and 2K22 now that that's out. He's, he's liking it and stuff like that. Anyway, Mark was like, yo, I'll buy the pay per view. Just like, I'll team you. And you guys can watch it that way. So this <laughs> motherfucker puts his. His laptop toward this TV actually worked out really nice, but I, I'm sick of shit. I'm not coming up here to like the bedroom slash office area to like right. watch it on this nicer monitor and stuff. I'm like literally on my phone, <laughs> just, just blowing my nose, coughing with an ear, one ear butted. So I'm not. Yeah, I'm also paying attention to a the monitor, b Tara because I don't want to be a shitty husband. <laughs> and I'm watching it on my little phone, and so all, all you can see is my phone, and I see Mark. And I made him the center screen because me and Nick are just like off to the side, just like quiet. Like we don't even have our video up. And I just see the whole laptop shake. Now, Mark's a big dude. I'm talking about tall. He's like tall. And I'm not saying he's fat. He's a big dude. He's yeah. a big motherfucker. So I see the camera like shake. It's like, what the fuck? And I'm like seeing it. And he's like, oh, oh Because <laughs> he used to go to his ROH shows. Like you probably see him in the fucking background. Like ROH what and shit. Right. And he comes around. And he's like screaming at the camera. He's like, "It's AFI! It's AFI!" <laughs> As Jeremy's texting us, Colbert's texting us. Like, it's AFI! It's AFI. I'm like, dude, I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. See, see I didn't. I, I was just hype. I was hype. I was like really excited. I was like, "This is cool as shit." And I'm going on Twitter to find out. Like, oh, let's right. see what this is. I, 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 you can call me idiot. Like, well, I like. I just didn't know. I assume the cult of personality was what he always had. Now, and see, then I I knew you know, I knew he had something it. else. I, I did not. I I don't know this song that played. Um, the only reason I even knew it was AFI. Reboot, I ain't gonna lie. Now it's, it's part of. <laughs> the only reason I even knew it was AFI is because I'm pretty sure at the very beginning, Excalibur says. CM Punk has a fire inside, and I was like, yes. "Oh, okay, yeah. it's definitely, it's definitely AFI." Like that was a way of saying it. Um, but I yeah, I, I just set up a uh, theme song playlist. <laughs> so, Ms. Miseria yeah, Cantera. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, like. I thought it was a big deal. It, punk people are like you, dumb motherfuckers. <laughs> like I, I'm sorry. But p- first of all. It was done so well. I, I mean, I, I'm going to congratulate them for oh, MJF as playing as Call of Personality and then it being his music. So well, then he got to it. come out to a different music. Like, it, it was just, it, it all fit. But when that different music came on, I'm like, this is definitely ROH Punk's music. I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming it is. Uh, again, 
you most people can make that assumption I, I don't I guess that's where I'm like and I mean this in the kindest way I possibly can uh, does WWE treat their fans like idiots because a lot of wrestling fans <laughs> If a lot of people were like again, I didn't know for sure, but I assumed. I mean, I I would think most people would assume that that's what it yeah. was. So I, I did that. I was like, I, immediately in my head. Uh, sorry, not to cut you out, but like immediately in my head when I heard, it, I was like, I don't remember this. It almost sounds like the Terminator theme song, and I was like, wait, no, he's never did anything like that. I, was like, <laughs> I bet he's like ROH, and I and it literally split second in my head was like, oh, I thought Cult of Personality was his ROH thing. Oh, uh, I guess not. Oh, well, this is cool. <laughs> I'm really excited. And then, like, Excalibur goes AFI as, as we're Culver sexing us and Mark screaming to the camera. Uh, I'm like, oh, it's AFI. No, AFI was his theme. And it was just, like, all a pleasant surprise. And I was yeah. like, damn, I'm really down. This is a really hype moment. Yeah. Why would I be angry? Why the yeah. fuck would I be angry about this? Yeah. Uh, but that- Why? This is this is wrestling in the fucking teeth. Yeah. Why be fucking angry about this shit? We get angry about shit, and maybe people call us dumb for it. This is fucking stupid. Yeah, it's it it is it is nitpicking for nitpicking, and it's 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 people who I mean, maybe homework, I feel like it's a lot of people fun. who don't enjoy AEW in general are watching it and are just trying to find things yeah. to complain about, and that's probably it. Um, I, I I was going to use the comparison, which, which is absolutely the truth. This is a hundred percent what it is. Everybody can complain about this all they want, but I went to go see Spider Man. No way home, right? Was the name of the last one? Yeah. I went to see it with both my kids and my fiance. Do you think all four of us understood every reference from there? I'm the only one that did. Yeah. I was the say. little kids never seen the other Spider Man movies. They had no idea who they were. Um, I'm pretty sure Jess never seen the amazing Spider Man movies. <laughs> And I'm not even 100% sure that movie. she's seen both of the Tom Holland ones. Like, she's more of a Tobey Maguire. That was when, but even then, she hasn't seen yeah. them in years. So little things they say, she she ain't going to remember. I've seen those movies hundreds of times. Um, and I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I'm the only one out of four of us that got every reference they talked about. And even then, I probably missed a couple. You know, so Easter eggs your, and shit like that. Experience? It was one of the oh. best movies I've ever seen. Exactly. I mean, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, so I can say that because Spider-Man in general is just one of the better movies that I've ever seen. But, like, they all loved it. They didn't say to me, I don't get why everybody in the audience was clapping because this person did this. The whole, um... Yeah, no one's annoyed. Yeah, the whole uh, MJ fallen, where it was supposed to be uh, the Andrew Gwen. Garfield and Gwen Stacy, you yeah. know, homage. Guess what? I don't even think... I think I'm the only one out of the four of us that even knew that that was literally the same thing that happened. And yet they were cheering that she yeah. got saved because it still was a cool moment because he talked yeah, about how he... Moment, yeah. I mean, it, it, he still talks about how, like, hey, I didn't save her, but they never show what happened. Yeah. So you don't know that that's almost exactly what happened, you know? So yeah. all those little things, like but th- like you said, it didn't it didn't take away from the experience. It would it have Ooh. would it have been a little bit cooler? Yeah, but that's yeah. why they call oh, them shout Easter out to that eggs. Guy filming the freaking uh, stage, <laughs> who's probably already filming the stage, but then this happened, and he you could tell he lost his mind because the camera sits on him for a second, <laughs> and he is belting uh. AFI out. And the, I was like, dude, I, I wish I was that guy because like, if you get the reference, it's even better. Like, yeah. I, matter of fact, people unless you watch the scrum afterwards. Which I, I highly everyone watch at least CM Punk's part. It was very emotional, very good. Um, he talks about some of the stuff that went into the match. But one of the little Easter eggs, he had Larry on his uh, on his like lapel, I guess you would say, on the jacket. Yeah. Pardon me. Instead of like the axes or whatever, like the strange right. stuff he would have. So it was like, oh, I saw that. I was like, oh, it's Larry. That's his dog. Oh, that's really emotional. That's really cool, man. Yeah. It's like a little shit. I got that. Did anyone else yeah. get that? Yeah. No, but that's a, cares? yeah. That's what like you said. It, it, I mean, I get it. It's his theme music, and people. Were, but we knew who was coming out. And if you were sitting there thinking, yeah. oh my god, who is this making a surprise? It's a dog collar <laughs> match between MJF and CM Punk. They yeah, ain't they ain't showing no surprise third person in this match showing like, up like triple like, H fucking come yeah out like i just that i it was clear it was cm punk coming out to the music it was going to be some type of special entrance and again i you just put two and two together that's what it basically comes down to yeah. people that are that angry about it it's it's one of like you said one of the stupidest things uh but 
I don't want to spend too much time on that because that's just people overreact and want to talk about. But apparently, I didn't want to talk about because you told me before we shot. I was like, oh, we need to talk about this because I didn't know about this. <laughs> yeah, that's what I just wanted to. You know, just it, I mean, it's just a lot of people saying it. So the one thing that happened, and since you don't even know any of this happened, uh, so somebody posted, "What am I missing with this punk entrance?" AEW Revolution. So punk responded. Oh. A deep understanding of storytelling, period. A brain, period. So, uh, he kind of came at him hard. And honestly, that guy was... There was a lot of people being assholes about it. I feel like he was legit like, hey, you know, he didn't have a Jer or a Mark telling us yeah, who yeah, it yeah. is. So, he probably didn't see it on Twitter. So, he's like, hey, let me put this out there and somebody can yeah, respond be, to be. it. Like, I'm just legit interested. That's what... I mean, it seemed like a very, very, like... And, and Punk probably seen billions of them across his feed. Oh, yeah. And, and that's this guy he... just got the attack. And this one was, like, <laughs> so basic. Day, yeah. So he literally responded, I understand the story. I'd never seen that part of your ROH career. Now that it's been explained to me, it's really awesome for those people that did. This whole storyline has been my favorite feud I've seen in over two decades. And I've said that many times. I mean, yeah, this really guy is legit being, like, super nice. <laughs> Like, I don't think there was, like, a, a mean intention, although I think, if I remember right, and then uh, Punk does apologize, right? So he he yeah, goes on, he says, I'm, so I'm sorry if I was a snark, if I was snarky to a guy who was being shit to other people in his replies. So if Punk seen him, like, if other people were replying to him, and he was, like, saying, like, talking shit to other people about it, I could see why Punk would kind of oh, it was almost like he was defending the other people that he was attacking uh, you know it's context all of this is out of context we don't know why also punk said it media. yeah we don't know why punk said it and i don't see all that other guys replies and to be honest with you it seems like the type of person that after punk apologized or once he replied to punk saying like oh i'm sorry this feud's been great it just start deleting all his replies that talk negative about it so people can't catch yeah. it. Um, but that's what he said. He said he was being shit to other people in his replies. Context is everything. None of this is important. Let's all hug and drink Shirley Temples. So, um... That's why he tried to get the Pepsi. <laughs> but, like, you know, I guess Pug seen, like, hey, I, I was kind of a dick to him, but he probably seen the, uh, that guy being dick to other people. Yeah, again, it's all context. A lot of people wanted to attack Punk. And say, see, this is why um, I th I forget who I seen on Twitter. They were like, you know how stupid you sound saying, see, I like CM Punk the wrestler, but this is why Phil Brooks the person's an asshole. And like, you don't even know Phil Brooks the person. You yeah, know no what? You know what? AJ. You know what he lets you know. Yep. And again, the one thing I know about him is he doesn't necessarily like people standing outside an airport trying to get 17 autographs of a bunch of pictures because fair. he knows you're trying to sell them like he's yeah. openly said that before I, I don't think he turns down kids but i think he's probably seen times where parents have sent kids over with multiple things and then they've sold them it happens you're not naive to think it happens i don't think he's an asshole i think he's jaded a little bit but i think that happens after yeah well, you've been around all it takes is a couple times thing. for something like that to happen to you where he felt like he got screwed over by fans asking for too much and selling it that i'm sure he probably is upset i'd be pissed i think yeah. any of us would be uh 100 oh, you know i know everybody I, I, thinks i was in a position but i would assume it would be the yeah same yeah and it's that how he owe, you know he owes it to the fans and they he wouldn't be in uh, one thing i hate and that's they say the sports too and and athletes are a little bit different than wrestlers because their money is <laughs> you know it's like not even yeah. close you're talking about 40 million dollar man and, and and ben simmons or punk who might be making three million. Oh, ben simmons who who gets charter jetted and and basically food fed to him by the staff he's he's laying down with grapes getting massages on his legs and punks you know i mean aw i'm sure treat the wrestlers different oh, but you're, yeah. you're thinking still... of wrestlers in general they're not getting all that kind of special treatment that those guys are or and those I, random ass like MLB contract where they're like a hundred million dollars for like five years of service and it's like what, yeah. what's he do? He's he's an outfielder. <laughs> what? He's a relief they that pitcher. Kind of money there? Like shit, I should have played baseball. He's a, he's a starting pitcher. He pitches once yeah. every, once a week. Um, yep. So 
but like even those i don't think they owe shit to anybody they have in their contracts that they have to do interviews and shit like that that comes with the territory but they don't owe anybody anything i don't care what anybody says they don't owe a fan a damn thing uh should that in a perfect world they would all be appreciative want to sign anything at least a kid would want signed yeah. because a lot of people say and it's the truth it's about the kids um in general but like there's nothing saying he has to be it doesn't make him a dickhead for um for not wanting to do now, all that now eddie guerrero in the midst of his drugs i got stories <laughs> It's not for me. My cousin actually right. met him because his dad used to work for Turner. And he, he went down to Atlanta. They see his dad. And he's like, oh, shit, Eddie Guerrero. He loves wrestling like I do. He went up to him and was like, hey, Eddie. Nope, Eddie's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I mean, oh, poor drugs. <laughs> I mean, I told I told you, uh, be, you know, before we move on to the next topic because i mean that that's basically it. people were idiots um i've been watching i i told you that um i've been watching being the elite i've been i've been binging oh. it right so yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, i'm like halfway through it now and i just start watching in the last couple of days um so like you see them on there and i said i have like almost a different found respect for the bucks a little bit because they're oh. like showing themselves on the road and like hey you know we just flew to japan then we have to go to the west coast now we're on the east coast and, and all yeah. this stuff and I like legit love them like i really do and it's funny because now they're getting to a point where it's them and um marty marty's girl <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not going to get into him. I understand why people were upset when everything happened because he's fucking hilarious on being the elite. That is not me Honestly, saying he I, should be back into wrestling. Yeah, that's not me great, saying anything. He's a great booker. That, that's not me saying, oh, he should be in AEW. I'm not saying that, what he did. He did what he did. He admitted to what he did, and he deserves the consequences of what he did. Um, okay. I am not getting into all that, but he's fucking hilarious on it. Um, so I get, I you never got the outrage. Like, though, you're like, oh, yeah. shit. I never That's got, Joey Ryan shows up. I never got the outrage. Well, I, he already died. Um, oh, I already got God. past that point where he died and then came back. But now I understand the Dick Drew. It's that I never understood because I never oh, watched yeah, Being the Elite. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. I remember you talking about it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't understand the Dick yeah. Drew. Like, I, did, what? I didn't get any of it. So, um, uh, even I seen when Fuck the Revival started. All that stuff. All that stuff that I've been out of loop. See, I've been able to enjoy AEW without knowing any being the elite. So fuck all these people who say, oh, we don't know this stuff. Because um, <laughs> I've been watching AEW and All In and All Out and all that stuff with no... With no context. Yeah, I had yeah, no context of what's going it. on. Um, but what I was going to say was... there's been There was times when they're like, we've been traveling for the last 22 hours for one eight-man tag that lasted 12 minutes i think about that they're traveling a whole day to be somewhere where they basically country they they probably took longer to get ready than the match lasted and between the young bucks they probably were in the match five six minutes total out of those 12 because everybody probably got their time so like these guys are fucking exhausted uh, yeah. I can understand them not being all peachy when you're like waiting outside their hotel room, hoping that they'll take seven billion pictures with them. Yeah, and all they want to do is just get back home to their family. Yeah, and, and, is that crazy? And I don't think it's a big dick move for them to say, "Hey, well, we're going to be down there taking, you know, giving autographs. Go there, like you know where we're going." Oh, yeah. you don't want to we'll pay do twenty right bucks now. for it. You want me to sign it right now, and I can understand that from from those guys. When that's the money they're making, um, you know, it's like anything else. It's asking anybody to do anything for free when yeah. that's the only way they make money. Um, so, and I get I get it. Punk's on a different level, but it shouldn't be that way. He's still he yeah. should be able to pick and choose when he wants to be in a good mood. <laughs> Yeah. I don't well, think he's a dickhead. I just think he's not in a good mood. <laughs> yeah, this is random. And we'll end with this little random story that right. I have, which is, is kind of hilarious. So I, uh, you know, I work uh, to be as vague as possible in a university-based uh, animal hospital in Philadelphia. So you gather what you will. <laughs> uh, I work in a business office, but back when I started, I worked in the emergency room, front desk. So every once in a while, we see celebrities. 
uh, like I met Jennifer Morrison from uh, House and Once Upon a Time. Uh, you know, she's from all that. Probably ill of me to say this on air. As gorgeous as she looks on TV, <laughs> just wow, <laughs> stunned. Uh, but I work, you know, an emergency room, so I'm talking to the owners of these animals at like the worst possible time. You know, for right. them, especially if, if they love animals, they're obviously paying a shitload of money to come to my place and you know get that done. So I, uh, you know, I met, I met, I've met a couple celebrities here and there, uh, OBJ and stuff like that. Hmm. Uh, but Foles came in, Nick Foles. So if you're Philadelphia sports fan, uh, Nick Foles came in uh, while he was quarterback, you know, starting quarterback of the Eagles, and I knew this ahead of time. Like I literally saw the the sheet from the night prior and uh, it said Foles I'm like huh well you never know in Philly you know that could be them right uh, like Lindros has come in that was hard I won't lie that was <laughs> difficult they, he didn't come through the emergency room so that was even worse because I just wanted to run to him and be like I want to give you a hug please can I give you a hug and John LeClaire. Uh that was difficult oh my god my boss almost by the way just wanted to just bang me. um <laughs> Loved them since day one. Still, still in love with them. <laughs> Belly rolls and all. So yeah. So anyway, uh, I saw the name and I was like, "That's crazy." So I, I talked to one of the nurses back, like, "Yo, Foles, this is like, like Nick Foles." And they were like, "I don't know this girl. She looked like really dressed up and she had high heels and stuff." We just assumed she was a lady of the night. I was like, "Really, dude? What the fuck?" <laughs> no, it was his wife. Right. They, it was Sunday. <laughs> they went to church. She wanted to look nice. Jesus Christ. So this is Monday morning. So Nick walks in, motherfuckers tall as shit, by the way. And I'm like, all right, I gotta be cool. I can't freak out. We haven't won the Super Bowl yet. Uh, and I'm like, I, I can't freak out. I gotta be nice, like work mode. And I, I was always able to distinguish it, but oh my God, there's so many people. The waiting room was busy. So everyone sees him and they're like, yo, can I get an autograph? He's here for his dog who's like fucking dying or some shit. The security guard is like, "Hey, yo, can I get an autograph?" I'm just the only. I'm the only one who does not ask for an autograph. And they're like, "Why didn't you ask for an autograph?" I'm like, "Cause he's here for his fucking dog who's dying. Like, I'm not gonna be like, yo, yeah. real quick. I need you to sign this. I need like eight thousand dollars from you, uh, cause that's your bill. And uh, also, you must <laughs> sign this real quick for me, man. Like, no, I'm not doing this. A, this is my place of job. I'm not trying to lose my job. B, I, you know, it's fucked up." Like yeah. they're mostly compromised. Like this isn't like I always said. If 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 he came in for like a normal, hey man, I'm just here for like to see dentistry. Their dentistry service. <laughs> my dog's teeth are, are ratchet. I'm like, hey, uh, Mr. Foles, real quick, you might sign this real quick. Mm. That's a normal interaction. That's a, just a normal thing. Right. There's nothing going on that is making him sad. Yeah. You know. Oh, and by the way, the day before they fucking lost. <laughs> I'm not talking to you on a Monday after you lost on a Sunday for the whole world to see. No, I'm good. <laughs> Uh, thank you. All I said was like, "Yo, man, hey, hey, fan, thank you." Also, you owe eight thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna lie. I um, the moment somebody else asked for it, I'd be right behind them. I wouldn't be the first one. I, th- I but I would. I thought about <laughs> the, the, the moment the somebody else no did it. Did anything for Jennifer Morrison as well? Like I'm surprised. Like she literally just came off a of start. I mean, the first eight minutes of Star Trek, but the very memorable eight minutes to I mean, she's yeah. a fucking TV show like, first of all you're, you're in Philly the, the third string quarterback would have had more people going on I, than that'd be, that'd be <laughs> fair than Captain Kirk's mother yes that's fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah so um, speaking of Captain Kirk's mother th- there's no real transition here uh, we're gonna a big fan <laughs> wrestling, we it? are gonna move into the 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 meat and potatoes so that took us about a half an hour we don't have a whole lot to talk about here either it's it's basically us complaining about two of the stupidest things in the world one people getting mad about cm punk not knowing his theme oh and that was the thing i wanted to tell you too earlier um i i sadly listen to snippets of jim Cornette's drive through uh, it's usually uh, whenever he's talking about certain things if he's going to bitch too much about something i try not to listen to it because it's 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 his character. I get it. If he doesn't like things, I get it. The only way people are going to listen, honestly, which should go to show you that what's actually the premier thing out there, he talks mostly about AEW and shits on it. Yeah. If he thought people cared about WWE, 
he would talk shit on WWE because it's the only way he gets listeners because he wants people to to argue back. Energy? It's it's yeah. Skip Bayless, it's Stephen A. Smith, it's all of them. Eric Bischoff, they're all the same way. Uh, Vince Russo, they all uh, controversy creates cash. They all want to say something that they know is going to stir certain people up. And then you got the people that that think they're gospel. So the one thing he talked about was that whole MJF Punk thing right before the pay per view, and he mentions how um. He said, I'm nitpicking here. He said, it was done perfectly. I love how, like, they didn't play the guy's music. Like, MJF took a while to come out. He said, because you know why? Because if he was sitting in the back watching on the TV, he wouldn't be right by the stage. They wouldn't have his music queued up. You know, and he was, like, saying it was done perfectly. Like, you know, it didn't look set up. You know, yeah, so, um, good. but he said the one thing he would have done is right before it, he said he would have taken some away from the Battle Royal, like, two minutes, just a quick overview of what, mjf said the week before just little snippets just to get you into it and i understand his i understand his point of view but aw is not that show uh the one thing i hate most about wwe and why i stopped watching is monday night raw is three hours and about a half an hour of it is replays of what happened in the beginning of the show preparing you for the end of the show and every 15 minutes they show the same replay saying oh this happened this happened earlier because they're always assuming you just came in but they're only focusing on that first thing that happened that usually has to do with the main event and it's a bit annoying because i'm like i've seen this i seen it live i seen the last time you played it you're playing it again i know you're going to play it four more times oh by the way when i watch smackdown i'm going to see that same raw main event thing that happened between roman reigns and somebody all over smackdown they're just going to talk about it on smackdown too they do it all the time it's 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 half replays yeah it's annoying it's it's, it's annoying i had the, the same problem uh, to cut quick with uh say like wrestlemania right they always have the best like video packages i don't know front like the shit's really good but if you watch the pre-show like a lot of us do you get that like drilled into your brain like five times so when the match is about to start and they do the really awesome replay you've already watched it like five times you're like i don't want to f- I, it yeah. kind of fast forward somehow in life to the like just get into the match because i've already sadly watched the one hour pre-show that had this on there and, that, and that's what like even um see i i don't like watching the pre-shows for that reason and AEW does a nice job they, they do a quick overview of the card they might show you little videos of each match throughout the buy-in and they give you three matches so like they'll give you like i if you watch the buy-in, you got a little quick overview of the Punk MJF. You got a quick overview of Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho, of, of Daniel uh, Brian Danielson and uh, Moxley. I like how they do it. Can they do it a little bit better, like like Cornette said, and, and assume that somebody didn't watch it last week without showing the whole thing? Yeah, and I think oh, that was sure, his sure. point. Was yeah. WWE shows too much? And he's like, he's like, they just got to do a better job of showing a little bit. But AEW, what they try to do is they try to fit as much wrestling in as they can, which is why they don't show entrances at the beginning of the shows. They're trying to fit more wrestling in and less about the storyline. And if you want storylines, then go watch YouTube. Go watch from the week before. Like, that's the way they – that's their mindset. Nothing's going to be perfect for everybody. Uh, no, no, no. But yeah, I, criticism, but yeah, yeah, no, yeah. And as I said, it, it, it's veil. It, it does it. It doesn't. It does not take away from my viewing experience. Would it take away from his? Clearly, yeah. It's it's all opinion based. Uh, but yeah, so I don't want to get too much into it. But I meant to say that earlier, and then we got lost into something else. Uh, but yeah, so from one one um. Ridiculous one thing. ridiculous thing to another yeah there you go that's probably the best way to put it uh we're going to talk a little bit about control your narrative um and what what like I, well, <laughs> what I God, what dude. what is all i can say about it i mean i feel like i'm, I'm stone cold back at yeah, wrestlemania yeah. <laughs> like i or some there dickhead were, in the crowd tonight with Eddie Kingston. There was so much excitement around. I mean, I was excited for it when uh, that when that yeah. popped up at ROH and it was like, okay, it's going to be like this group. And then I had faith for it, and they're like, oh, okay, we're going to run shows. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then him saying we have a um pending TV, TV deal, yeah. which I'm sorry, but pro wrestling TV is like that's like. You're playing with words now to tell everybody you have a TV deal because it's not a uh-huh. TV deal that is a streaming site with TV in it. 
yeah. two completely different things. And I'm assuming something didn't drop out when he said that. I'm assuming that's what this was from the yeah, beginning. Yeah. T- TV um, literally means impact, New Japan. Yeah. You know. I don't care if it was ROH something. And, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I don't care what channel it was. You know, the cooking channel, whatever. But TV, yeah, you yeah. tell us it's TV. I'm, I'm under the impression that I can watch it on TV and not with a uh, Fire Stick. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So it's already kind of off to like a weird footing, right? Uh, and then I understand uh, Braun Sh- Strowman, Adam Shear, whatever you want to call him. I understand he's a big name, um, and it yeah. probably got them a lot of what they have right now. EC3 kind of need them behind them, but my God, if there's ever been a person that has shoved his foot in his mouth about professional wrestling more than Adam oh. Shearer, I don't really know because and when I mean, WWE like he's, he shoved his mouth in for like his girlfriend Raquel Gonzalez, like he's doing it just in general. But like he he yeah he. And he did it when he was with WWE, where, like, he'd be out and he'd be telling people how, like, people would say stuff to him and he'd be talking about how he trained his whole life. You know, like, he trained as a bodybuilder. He got pulled up the street. You know, and he just talks about all the... Like, he just... He don't. Or, he don't get it. People for, like... He doesn't... the indies. Yeah. And he got fired. Yeah. He he doesn't get it. He he clearly does not get wrestling fans, and... The problem is, control your narrative is supposed to be about guys no who won. Right? Yeah, it, it's supposed to be guys who, who never had a chance, guys who are looking for a second chance, um, which is where you get Austin Aries, where I know a lot of people have issues with him. Um, but it, Austin Aries has done shit. I don't yeah. think he's done anything like. It's more just the way he's, like, treated people backstage and him, like, no selling at Impact and shit like that, right? Yeah, like, that's, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. people's biggest issue with him. He's, it's not like Marty... Say, it's not like Marty Skrull or, um... Or, uh... Didn't Flip Gordon also have, like, a... A, a female thing? No, and, I don't think Flip Gordon has... He's a flat earther and just... Okay. He aligns with kind of a lot of Austin Aries' yeah. views on the world. Right. <laughs> you know, with, um, j- with jabs, vaccines, <laughs> whatever you want to yeah. call them. You know. And, I, and, and I, I know, again, a lot of it's a touchy subject to people, but uh, there's a lot of people out there with the shit that came out about Jay Lethal or Darby Allen. There's guys that had stuff come out with them, Riddle. There's guys that have had theory. stuff. Yeah, there's guys that have had stuff come out that are just as much proof as some of the other stuff. And it just kind of depends on the person. Uh, so, Austin Aries, you cannot like him. I don't think that was a bad call. It's a name. It is a name for their thing. And Austin Aries is known by a lot of people. I get it. Don't matter if he's a dickhead or not. I get it. Um, but, like, it's this whole... I've, I've seen somebody basically say it was like a, like a white supremacist wrestling. And it comes off that way. It really it actually, does. It actually does. Which is... That's the meat and potatoes of it, right? Like, it really, really does. And I think it's no fault of, like... I think they just dumb and they don't know how to market. Like, you know, I... Uh, it, it, <laughs> it's just so stupid. Like, all right, so you hear the original thing, right? You hear the original premise. EC3 wants to do his own thing. He's very creative. He's very smart. Actually, he did a lot of backstage. I think some stuff in Impact is a great mind for the business. He's a great talent, I think, too, honestly. I think he, he's got enough of it that he should have a place at the table. I, and then he did, you know, the, the original event. He got, got, he kind of got over, you know. It was a little production quality. It was like, yeah, it's not great, but, you know, it told a story or whatever. Right. And I, there's a second one I believe they already did as well. And then, it pretty well now launching the thing yeah i i was excited for the promise of a control your narrative like thing we mentioned before you know um when roh went out of business and control your narrative is kind of being the thing like well mecca you know has a history with ec3 and they you know there's yeah. the whole exchange the whole at, thing that know, happened at yeah. final battle and now i'm like mecca you should probably stay away from that 
for like you yeah know, i mean his like, name has not is right there you, you go there i go anywhere yeah, but, his, his but name here. has not been associated with it i'm i'm happy about that and uh, yeah, uh, in a way he, he, you know he was doing a lot of control your narrative stuff before it and his name hasn't really been associated yeah. with it and yeah i'm 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 actually happy uh be, so he, he, the yeah. thing, he would get exposure which is nice you know but it's more being associated with this thing and yeah man sheer doesn't shut the fuck up um which is not like like he's not shutting up for like a good reason he's shutting up because he just won't shut the fuck up just shut the fuck up stop fighting fucking fans <laughs> all the fucking time like we talk about punk going against that dude for like not understanding the thing but yeah look, there's context there you know uh is it's almost like a teachable moment. This dude was shitting on indie workers while he was making big bucks in WWE as a universal champion. Like, <laughs> first of all, you got that belt because fucking Roman Reigns didn't want to catch COVID. Cause, you know, he just had cancer. <laughs> uh, and then you beat a fucking old ass man for that belt. Second of all, there's no fucking fans when you beat, won that belt. And not like uh, everyone was like, oh, not a, oh, this is sad. Like when McIntyre won later that night. No, this is more like, eh, yeah. I'm yeah. happy there's no fans for this because I think that we would boo the shit out of you. <laughs> you have, like, some of the worst, man. You made Bray Wyatt look bad. Like, how the fuck did you make Bray Wyatt look bad? Fuck out of here, man. No, stop talking shit. Shut the fuck up. And just wrestle. You yeah. know what? I didn't mind some of your matches. I didn't, I didn't mind some of them. You're a big dude. You do some fun big boy stuff. It's fun. It's a fun segment for me. Should you have won the world championship? I, I can't say whether yes or no. I mean, you were in Jinder Mahal. So it's, I, the, the sky is up he, you he, know, for you. He should have gotten it well before he did when he was at its hottest. Yes. Um, yeah. And but then it kind of died like, down because I think a lot. Well, there was a lot of behind the scenes shit. He was doing a lot of other stuff. But like, I, I mean, I, I wanted to kind of get into one thing he said, and this was my biggest. Yeah. I, I've yeah. I've had an issue with anything, everything in general they've done so far. They're they're a lot more low, um, like. Not low maintenance, but low, um, low brow, I guess. I don't know. They, they're lo- <laughs> like they, they yeah. wrestled in a very small venue. <laughs> like I, I just didn't expect it. Like something yeah, it that was, probably it was a legit super small. Like I think it was like a bar or something. Look better than this. Yeah, like I mean, when when you make twenty three hundred arena look like a real arena, that's not a good thing. Um, and that's no. that's that's where they're wrestling. So yeah, and, we're, and we're talking like. Pre twenty three hundred, like when it was an actual bingo hall. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so he, um, I don't know what this is in reference to. I know he definitely said it because I did find this, where Braun Strowman responded to something, or it might have been when he posted about a show on March thirty first, which is right before WrestleMania weekend, um, and he said, uh, "This will be the only place to be on three thirty one." Unless you want to watch a bunch of dorks choreograph dance with each other for no reason at all, because we don't do that garbage in the narrative, because we actually fight. Um, now, if I could see the rest of it, uh, yeah, because it all starts off saying if you missed the first show, it was sold out, because so, we actually fight. Where's the rest of it? Be a part of the future, be a part of something special, be a part of change. We are the future. Pro WTV tagged in. Um. So, yeah. <laughs> it's Apparently, oh, oh, okay. So they're um they're gonna be at Gillies in Dallas, which I only even heard of because I was watching Being the Elite, and they were in Dallas, and they said the the famous Gillies, uh, which did yeah. not look like a huge place to wrestle in. They were there, like oh. eating and playing pool. <laughs> so apparently, um, the reason why there was an issue was apparently. I want to say it was GCW. Because, uh, oh, somebody asked him the question about it, right? And, and it, he mentions how he wasn't talking about WWE. He was talking about another three-letter show that um, tried to stop them from getting that place, right? So your mind automatically goes to AW, And I'm like, is AEW trying to stop yeah. them from going to Gillies? I highly doubt it. So apparently, from what I read, and I don't know this for sure, it looks like it was GCW. Um, who is also has an event that night, and I think that's why he said, "Unless you like watching 
Yeah, Dan, apparently, because a lot of people I seen post GCW over CYN, you know, or greater than symbol. First of all, if you so, talk about we really fight. Okay, listen. Have you seen a GCW match? Yeah. Those motherfuckers bleed. Yeah, see, and, no and re- that's no reason to bleed. That that's much. why I wasn't one hundred percent sure if he, you know, I, I don't know. I just know he said another three letter show. Um, AEW's not running an event on a Thursday, so I don't quite get it. I doubt AEW gives a fuck what they do because they're getting a, a hundred people. Um, yeah. But like, I realize it, and and again, I literally just praised Jim Cornette for knowing how to pull at people's things. The problem is, you don't see Tony Khan doing this. You don't see Vince McMahon doing this. You don't see them coming no. out. And Adam Shearer, unfortunately, is the face of management when it comes to this show. Oh he is God. not just a singular wrestler who's talking out of his ass. You know what I mean? Like, it, literally, this show is based around EC3 and and Adam Shear. I mean, really, and now Killer Cross. Like, they're like the three staples of this right now. You know, when you yeah. think of it, they're the three face faces of it. And if they're not going to have a management and they're going to control it themselves, well, guess what? Fans are going to look at somebody and they're looking at you and you sound like an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I'm, not, I'm not ignoring you. I literally, I remember I was in a uh, wrestling room. I was trying to see if I could find a funny ass tweet I found. But yeah, I mean, we can could, we could still talk about it. Cause right. like, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, man. Like watching some of this stuff, like I, dude, I actually, I'm not even going to lie forgot this show was on saturday when people were talking about wrestling on saturday yeah. i thought everyone was talking about like oh yeah impact had a thing and like that's why you know AEW was on sunday i was like oh that's cool they're not like interacting with each other because i was for the longest time i was like trying to figure out like yeah what what is going on why is AEW on a sunday when it's not a holiday weekend like my ass has to wake up early i didn't because i'm sick but like i i was like oh that that's what happened right like it's because of impact i was like oh that's cool you know that's nice that they're not like like trampling over each other you know um, but man, like I started, I forgot about it. Started looking, I was like, "What the fuck is this event? This event sucks!" Like, yeah, this uh, is the worst. What the fuck? I, I, if I didn't even, I didn't even attempt to to see any of it. I, I seen too many yeah. bad things, and I was just like, "Nah." All right, well, you already lost my attention before you could even try to get it. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is, uh, I, this doesn't. This is not like specifically anything like like funny. Funny. I guess I don't know. You know, you ever see that meme with all like the knights putting their swords on the round table? Mm. This is the image of King Arthur and all this. It says WWE fans, AEW fans, New Japan fans, Impact fans, people who have eyes, Stardom fans, old school Pluto wrestler fans, GCW fans. <laughs> so got me. Sorry, bum fight fans. <laughs> and in the middle is like <laughs> fuck control your narrative. <laughs> <laughs> the bump fight, that's what got me. I was like trying not to die. I was like, oh, wait, I found a different meme. This is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> but it's yeah. like, it, there's another person too, right? So that's a shitload of problematic people. A lot of the, the you know, things that you can do at an event, right? There's the, the rant room and stuff. like You can could, you could pay like a shitload of money to go in the rant room and yell at a wrestler to their face. I'm like, no, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's so much like little stuff like that. It's like why? Yeah. I, why are we doing this? Yeah. All the I, I don't. I did find that the response. Apparently, somebody said something to him. He said definitely not talking about WWE. But theirs. Hold on. And I want to talk just like him because it, it's hilarious. But theirs. Theirs is another three-letter brand running a show close by that is so afraid of what we are doing that they tried getting the venue to not let's us let's us run our show pretty ca- crazy how scared the industry is of a bunch of so-called nobodies lol so somebody said it was AEW somebody else said GCW and they said if you look at some of the other stuff he said it sounds like he's talking about AEW I highly doubt AEW tried to stop them from wrestling at Gillies on a weekend that I AEW don't give a fuck about them. I don't think AEW's even in that location. I'm I'm not quite I'm I'm confused. I'm confused WWE on why they give tra- a fuck about them. Yeah, like, I'm Oh, hold on. He said it was MLW. 
Oh. So apparently he said it was MLW to somebody because somebody said he said it was MLW, and then the person said, "I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure. I believe that backtrack." Now, to be honest with you, he probably was talking about the. He was talking about MLW. The only reason I know is because I listened to the SRS interview with he did with EC3 last week. I listened to see how bad it was, and don't remember recommend listening to it because it was full of cringe okay well so yeah, p- appar- apparently they made reference so mlw apparently is who has an issue Listen, with them MLW wrestling is doing god's work at that point yeah uh, yeah i mean uh, and and it's a favor the funny thing is it could be something as stupid as there could be somebody contracted with MLW who's supposed to be on the show that they're trying to stop. You know, there's a lot of different reasons. Like, you can be saying other... Because I think I've seen Enzo is, like, listed, and I don't know if he's signed with MLW or not. But, you know what I mean? Like, it's very possible it's something like that. They were trying oh, to bring somebody from ML- MLW. Yeah. And, but I don't know if it's exclusive, but if it is, you know, they might consider Control Your Narrative to be more than just an indie booking. You know, yeah. I, I who yeah, knows if they're trying to build themselves as being more than just an indie show, then that means wrestling companies are going to view it as, hey, this is not an indie show. Um, I don't know; it's confusing because they're they're lower than an indie show, yet they're they talking are, down yeah. about indie shows, saying, hey, we're real. It's like Shane McMahon trying to make us believe that the un- the underground raw underground was real. Like oh now, dude, you're yeah. you're just as choreographed, my man. You're no, not you're no, not yeah, in here. You're not. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm sorry. You're not doing flips, so that means it's less <laughs> dancing. No, it's the it same is. fucking thing, dude. No, same it's exact such a thing. Shit show. And like they didn't even like have a good like spatial awareness, right? Like like watching. I watched like a clip of. Um, Adam goes over like a thing, he clips a kid in the head. Yeah, I, uh, I see that, and he starts like apologizing. Cool. Which, hey, that's actually nice. That's cool. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I have no jokes for that. <laughs> but there's like, he just looks so awkward because he's so fucking big and there's a small ass space. I just found another one of you know when CM Punk first came back to wrestling in right. August, the this night, he's crying and just sitting there, just look taking everything in. And it says uh, Nia Jax showing up to control your narrative, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god, there's so many like there's so many of these like it's just so bad. Like this <laughs> it, it, they said the first paper you should be called the insurrection. Um it says someone said this uh, the place looked like someone's basement. Uh <laughs> Jesus god. Dude, th- there's so many people like I'm just I'm reading that thing, you know, um have you ever seen a David Bixen span? I know yes, he posts a lot of that stuff. So he he put weight as Braun saying that the style of wrestling that he was trained in doesn't have matches that are laid out in advance, move by move. Okay then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like the only way he's ever been like, trained in, like <laughs> the luxury of going right to the WWE program and just learn the WWE way from jump and then be a big yeah. star. Like, yeah. are you kidding? So, me? so if I control your narrative, oh no, not that narrative. Only the narratives we like. The place to be, 331, is planet fucking death. <laughs> the, the, the narrative we like. I just put that hashtag, all lives matter. Uh, it, uh, it. <laughs> it's just killing me. This is so stupid. Like, it's just so dumb, man. I don't. Yeah, uh, I don't. EC3, man. I don't know what his, like, I don't know what his deal is. He seems well, like a good dude. It looks like Bixen Span also said another one, too. I don't do choreographed dance wrestling. Which is why my lone WrestleMania main event was beat for beat laid out exactly the same as the next night's WrestleMania main event. No choreographed dance wrestling here, <laughs> and that is true because yeah. that was the, they literally had the same fucking match. They yeah, were both really, the same exact match. Yeah, it's. Yeah, all, I thought that was weird. Yeah, man. I, I, uh, yeah. I thought that was weird. It was hell, almost man. like Braun Strowman watched them get ready for the other match and said, "I can do that." And they're like, "Okay, yeah, that's exactly what I do." <laughs> Like, oh, okay, all right. It's a two different nights. People are idiots. They're probably not watching both nights. It's all right. Nobody will notice. <laughs> God, no. Man. Like, I and just... Part of me wants to, like... <sighs> like I want to try to find this show, but I'm not spending money, dude. No. Yeah, that's, and that's not what... at all, man. EC3 is so creative, and that's what sucks about all of this, is he's so creative. Clearly, clearly the idea of having everybody be responsible for themselves is not a good idea (laughs) 
especially when you have a bunch of second chancers and guys who were on the fringe of never being able to wrestle again. And that's like the thing. Too. You like don't want them want all speaking the their mind. People. Yeah, like he needs them. For name value, he needs who he has. The problem is, Braun Strowman is where he is because of his fucking mouth. Yeah, he, honestly, yeah. And now you're going to give him an open up. mic. Austin Aries yeah. got to where he is because of his fucking mouth. And you're saying, here's an open mic. <laughs> like, think about that. Like, it, it, He should be happy they didn't get real TV because if they got real TV, they wouldn't have real TV anymore. Like, I... There's, there's I'm so excited for this. Who actually went, who went to it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to find her tweets. Uh, she's also was at like Dynamite and Rampage. So <laughs> that's the first thing that popped up. I'm like, damn it. Uh, her name's Zenia. Yeah, I'm trying to find her tweets real quick. Um, okay, sorry. Try not to freak out. What spoiler? I just read from Rampage. Uh. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. let's wait for a minute. Yeah, no, da, it, it's. Oh, man, I cannot believe that. Freaking. And, like, I thought it was. I was worried when, like, EC3 was like, I got a company. I'm like, hell yeah, man. Good for you, man. You deserve it. Yeah, and I'm like, he, he's like, creative as shit. And I know, I know, I know. In my mind, it was storyline purpose only. Like, nobody's controlling this. And, and yeah, we're yeah, just yeah, going yeah. out there and doing it. And, and I could even see him kind of somewhat being right about that. Where, like, all right, you control your own matches, stuff like that. You know what I mean? We're not going to have bookers. We're not going to do this. We're going to kind of flow with it. But you need somebody to kind of organize it. And if he's the guy, then guess what? He's exactly what he said they're not going to have, first of all. Somebody has to kind of control it. So to act like now nobody's in charge, well, you're technically in charge. Second of all. get hurt. Yeah. Second of all, like... All right, fine. That's the, the the idea that you're going around, right? That these people people out there hate Tony Khan. There are people out there who hate Tony Khan. There are people out there who hate Vince McMahon. Yeah. They hate them guys getting involved in wrestlers' business. Completely understandable. I get it. The fact of the matter is, the reason I was interested is because I thought this was going to be a brainchild of EC3. Now, if you're telling yeah. me only your matches are your brainchild and everything else is at Adam Shear brainchild and Austin, Austin Aries brainchild, a Killer Cross brainchild, I don't want any of those brain children. Keep them. Nope. <laughs> I, I don't want them. You know, like I, I there's a clinic you can get rid of them. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I do not, I do not want them at all. I that they are, I am not the father. I don't want them. Like no, keep them away. So yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I just the intrigue was. I thought EC3 had control over this, and if he does have control over this, then somebody else stopped him from really bad ideas on YouTube and only picked the good ones. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Yeah. Because <laughs> if Who this to you? if God. if this was his idea, that they stopped him from from bad shit. Because there's no way that all that gold he put out there with all these different things. Um, yeah, was his only I ideas. Like, yeah. it, it couldn't have been his only ideas if this is his idea. Because this is this, like you said, the whole you pay extra money to go fucking yell. You know what's gonna happen? Do you think Adam Shear's the type of person to get insulted too many times to his face without getting really angry and gripping somebody up, and then they get sued? Oh. Yeah, a hundred percent. I highly 100%. doubt. Unless he's there, like on some type of like. Um, I don't know, uh, any type of drug that would keep him relaxed in the moment and not touch anybody. He's a fucking hothead. I gotta be honest with you, yeah. I, it, it, it wouldn't be fun for me to yell at him because I'd be like, this dude might legit hit me. And not like yeah. not like in like a Brock yeah. Lesnar way where I'm like, I think he has control, but he would yeah, tear my head off. try to murder me, but... It, but I don't want to get hit. Or grabbed around the throat because he got angry because I talked about his mom. I, you know what I mean? Like I don't know. Just somebody. If you're paying money to do that, you you better not be going and saying you're a bad wrestler and then walk away. You better be hitting below the belt. If you're hitting below the belt, I don't fucking trust yeah. most of these guys to keep their cool. <laughs> so here, let, let's talk about so when a a wrestler is announced to the ring to uh, CYN, right? It goes, uh, the commanders are announced as blank enters the narrative. So EC3 enters the narrative. Okay. Creative. 
uh, when the winner is announced, it's blank has controlled his narrative or her narrative. Eh, a little corny, a little corny. Uh, but reading her like blow by blow, like of the night that she was there, and she said some people were like, you know, like digging it. The way the ring is positioned, make it made it visibly very limited, staying about four or five rows. If, if there were rows, but I can't, she's like, I can't see shit. Uh, Ryzen was there, whatever. Uh, she's God. <laughs> uh, as, as far as I understand, they have projects slash, uh, developmental talent projects pertain to a certain wrestlers. Um, and they, they work that way. Right. Um, Weston Blake showed up. This was uh, from WWE. Yeah, he yeah, he was one of the guys at ROH. Yeah, yeah, he sh- should have been the other guy if I heard. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, to see you guys there, a lot of people will probably be in January 6th. Um, yeah, dude, there's, it just seems like a just a shit show. There's like a teddy bear. There's a guy big as shit, and it was cut his promo. And in the background, they showed. Uh, Austin Aries things boiling. Austin Aries is there. Um, I mean, there's a lot of like little things that like happen that it's like a first show, and it's like it would have gone bad, and we would still, I think, made fun of it if it was like, you know, perfectly okay. They could have uh, done the same exact show they did in a sold out Wells Fargo Center, and I'd still be like, that sounds awful because it sounds yeah. awful. Like I, I uh, I'm sorry, your first show, you can't. Uh, you, can't you can't bring miss. like you can't bring in a shit ton of people for something that has some type of hype behind it. There are people out there that are fans of Braun Strowman and Austin Aries. Not everybody hates these people. All right, sure. there are people it's that true. wish they would get another chance. Uh, there, there's plenty of people that know them and would love to go see them. So, like you said, I didn't even remember it was. I I didn't know when it was. I'm yeah, still, like, like confused how I just randomly seen results. I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, and just reading that the little symbol thing that they put out there, or the... the oh, yeah, that, yeah. Here's Because I'm just looking through Adam Shear's stuff. I was trying to see if he said anything else that people posted, and it says, Hashtag control your narrative does not affiliate with any political party, ideology, or divisive rhetoric. We will continue to amplify diverse and underrepresented voices. Um... Isn't like ninety nine percent of them white? Just saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, we stand against bullying. Adam Shear just called a bunch of the choreographed dorks. I, I calling people dorks apparently is not bullying. Slander, not slander, and fear that controls the masses. So him basically insulting a whole certain type of wrestling that most fans That's love is not him trying to cause fear or slandering or bullying at all nope 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 he's one of the main guys there so it's okay you know it's it's like any it's just like wwe Hold on, you don't want to be wwe those rules apply to some not all uh, okay uh so yeah, we intend like it's, uh. <laughs> we, we intend on using our abilities as performers to create a form of entertainment that is intimate and real through our art we can give hope to those afraid to question themselves we choose to challenge the boundaries of the industry and show people what they haven't had in a long time carriage um carriage to what yeah because you've you've insulted me for what i like telling me that's wrong and this is right so now you're not bullying but you're bullying fans of wrestling and saying you're watching the wrong wrestling i don't know that anybody's asked for this a lot of people asked wwe to get rid of this and now you're just reforming the the underground thing that people hate it (laughs) i mean it, it was bad it was absolutely bad the whole the idea was bad the way they represented it would be good one out of like five times um it was just bad uh, we we were talk about it, right? So we 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 had Alex Kane on. And right. He was a uh, like a one of the local talent that was featured. Yeah. I think I found this out right. It was like September twenty nineteen or something. Um, 
I found I like did research after he told us. I was like, <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> and he's in the background, and he had some dude. You're know, like, this is how bad Raw Underground was 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 going, right? He had some dude who Shaving Man had show how to throw a punch. Shaving Man, the worst person yeah. who's ever thrown a punch nah. in all professional wrestling. Who actually has like MMA background? Like he like, yeah. fights in jujitsu and stuff. He has like training and stuff. Does not know how to throw a punch, at all. No. In yeah. The universe and how to show this yeah. wrestler, who's whose name yeah, is he Knockout. Said, I was gonna say Knockout, right? That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. His name is Knockout. Yeah. He has to show this man how to do this. No, sir. Yeah. That's how bad <laughs> Raw Underground was. But that's WWE. What the fuck do you think is gonna happen? But that's what this is. This, I don't care what uh, EC3 can say this is new and innovative it's not we, we watched this on Mondays and they got rid of it on a show that people are not watching religiously anymore hated that and you're saying hey this didn't bring in non WWE fans because it was stupid this chased away some current WWE fans because it was stupid yeah. what audience is he hearing that was begging for that? Because that's what this is. I, again, I, I don't care what anybody said. They, like you said, it's cheesy. This whole um, he controlled his narrative by winning. Like uh, what? Yeah. What, what the, hell do you think the fuck going, does man? that mean? If yeah, you if you control your narrative enough, you can become our control your narrative champion. And and uh, yeah, like uh, like what? Yeah, like you're you're I, I, trying too hard, my man. Like, it, it, yeah, it's funny that I mentioned Alice Kane too because I, I started like that's how I looked off screen because I went on Twitter to see people's reactions. I should have bookmarked him. I didn't even think about it. But uh, Alex has some funny reactions too. He's again suited of the game. You know, you can listen to our episode with him. It's, it's really good. He's really insightful. Uh, he has a really good head on his shoulders for wrestling, especially at his young age. Um, yeah, so he, the whole. You know, Braun Strowman, like, this would be the only place, uh, 331, unless you want to watch a bunch of dorks career have dance with each other for no reason at all. Call at all cause, we don't do that garbage and narrative because we actually fight. And he goes, he, He's like, Yes, yeah, shit on the only reason you're known. Please continue. Yeah. Y'all don't fight, you circle jerking. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it's it's, wrong, it's the dude. truth. Nobody would know who EC3 was if it wasn't for all this choreographed shit. Uh, yeah, you know, exactly. nobody know who Adam Shear is. Nobody would know who Killer Cross is. Nobody would know who any of these guys are. Uh, I mean, literally, Austin Aries, half of his wrestling is high flying and all this choreographed shit. Exactly. The fuck are we talking about mean? here? That's why he's cool as shit as a wrestler. Like it what? Like I I, I don't know. I just don't. <laughs> why? 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 We, we don't think this is real. Nobody is going in here thinking this is real. You're not going to make us think it's real. Because it's not real. So, and if it is real, I don't want to pay extra money to go talk shit to your face. Because you're telling me that you're actually hitting each other. I don't fucking trust you to not hit me. Like, I don't know. It, it's, like, it's like taking so much... Like... Suspending belief, like, is like what we just watched with Punk and MJF, right? Yes. Like in that storyline oh, where you knew MJF was turning, you didn't know when he was going to turn, but then a small, tiny bit of you thought. I mean, I literally watched people talk about a double turn. That's how convinced yeah. some people were that they thought yes. at the pay per view MJF was going to turn into the good guy and CM Punk was going to turn into the bad. Like people were convinced of that. That's how well it was done. That's oh. real. Yeah. That's oh, as God. real as wrestling gets. Don't don't try to say like we're we're a fighting company, we're not a wrestling company. Well, no you're not. Yeah. Put Adam Shear in an MMA ring and watch him get beat the fuck up. Just because he's seven foot doesn't mean that he's anything yes. other than a big fucking goof out there. So don't 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 give me this shit. You're like, known you know, because WWE seen you were tall and you were a power lifter and invested time in you, even when you didn't deserve it. They invested time with you. Yeah. And that's the only reason people even know you is because they put you there. You didn't put yourself there. If anything, you held yourself back. There's a lot of stories about he was supposed to get the title, but then he said something backstage or he didn't stay for his exactly. match and shit like that. Like, If you remember, Brock Lesnar had issues with him. 
like Brock yeah. Lesnar seems to like a lot of people, <laughs> and yeah, he, he had is, issues he with like him. A decent dude. Yeah, and he he, just, he had issues with him. If you remember, that was a triple threat match. I want to say in Philly, I think um, it was uh, was oh. it Brock Lesnar, Strowman, and. Kane, I want to say. I don't. I felt Maybe. like it was a three big man thing. I don't. I don't remember who the third person. And I'm gonna be mad at myself afterwards when I see it. Uh, it's pot. Was it maybe Kevin Owens? Um, I'm trying to or think. Samoa Joe, maybe. No, you know, I'm thinking that like big five man. Yeah, yeah. Joe I think it was the night when John Cena wrestled Mark Henry. Um, I, like yeah, yeah. post the whole um retirement. fake retirement thing, but like. I remember, like, because I think it was a time, like, Strowman actually hit Lesnar, and you could see Lesnar, oh, like, react it back at him. I love that. Um, I love that because so <laughs> Lesnar fucks him up. And I, don't, and I could be confusing two completely different matches, and I probably am. But, um, yeah, like, that's just going to show you, though. Like, he wasn't trained well, which is why he didn't get there. And he can blame it on all the dork fans that didn't want to see him. Most people were of agreement that they wanted him to be champion because we were getting Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar th- shoved down our throats and nobody wanted it. Braun gave us something different. Yeah. And Listen, we, we know that we're, that's where it was going. You might as well do it when, like, yeah. everyone's kind of hot on him. And then it but, fizzled. I'm like, well, he's never going to be champion. But it fizzled because he couldn't keep his mail shut backstage. You know, oh. I, you know and, and that's what it sounds like. It sounds like Why he can't keep his mail shut here. Why do you think Riddle didn't win the fucking yeah. Royal Rumble? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing the same he's thing. He's shit. yeah. He's he's affecting himself in a negative yeah. way because he should be their their like one of the faces well, of their company listen, right man, now. Once Brock's out of the company, I mean, on his own terms, and if Riddle's still around, and doesn't have any more controversies to his name as well. <laughs> you know, there would be his time then. But right now, where he look, oh man, he looks like he's gonna win the Royal Rumble. Hey, you should win the Royal Rumble. And Brock's like. Uh, fuck no. He keeps talking shit. <laughs> so, no. Fuck him. And it walks away. He was like, All right, Brock said no, so, uh, yeah, you go fuck yourself. <laughs> you know, have fun with the tag team titles. Thank God Randy's in your corner. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Now, I want to bring up something to you as we wrap up the show. Okay. It's it really interesting. So, I'm, I've been going through Twitter little by little and just checking people's stuff. So, I went down Adam Shear's Twitter. And this is posted March 7th. So, imagine AR Incorporated. So, so imagine Augmented Reality Incorporated. They posted, excited to announce a three-year partnership agreement today with Adam Shear and Real EC3 for Control Your Narrative to be the official Metaverse mobile app sponsor to hold their talent on FameDays.com as e-greeting holograms. This company's not lasting three years. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now. Imagine AR just lost money on that deal. They lost money on that deal. First of all, the metaverse isn't a thing. It's not going to be a thing. It's not going to be a thing for a very long time. We're not going to be living in Ready Player One anytime soon. And I thought I <laughs> see the funny thing is I thought Meta isn't that, wasn't that the new company name for Facebook? <laughs> meta, yeah. Okay, meta. The metaverse. See, and every time I see metaverse, that's all I think about anyway. So trying to use exactly. that as anything else, and, and I I'm pretty sure it was a thing before Facebook took Meta, but um now it's now to me I hear metaverse when they said metaverse, I thought they were talking about they were going to be streaming on Facebook honestly. When that first came out, like, because they hinted at it and just said Metaverse before any of that shit popped up, like the actual announcement, I assumed their deal was with Facebook, that they were going to stream on Facebook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, 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 you would think that, right? Yeah. You would think that, like, oh, maybe we got an exclusive partnership. No, 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 no. No. So, yeah, there's, like, holograms you can get of the And then, like, looking at, can you imagine being EC3's, like, friend and be like, hey, man, you going to give me work? Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you for giving me work, dude. This is gonna be exciting. <laughs> and then it's like, well, yeah, you gotta work with like Austin Aries. What? what? <laughs> Why? Like he doesn't even wrestle that much anymore. <laughs> he's kind of a dick about everything. It's like not even politically. Like he's just a dick about wrestling. Like, yeah. Why are you going no show impact? Like I know they're not great, but like, you know, John Morrison's he's a legit nice dude. Like. Except for that one time, like, how you do this? Yeah, like, I, I was, I was convinced that that was done on purpose. I, I still remember seeing it, like, ooh, that was, you know, that was, like, almost like it was going to become a, a WCW 
like you know vince russo kind of angle and not that you know i'm always interested to see where things like that go so that's why i was convinced that's what it was and uh, it, it was not um yeah, uh, and, uh, this is so weird <laughs> like this ar thing right the imagine ar incorporated yeah like I, I went on their their fame days uh website right fame days.com there's literally nothing you click on it just says fame days party with the stars celebrity holograms are coming april 2022 in a photo of von miller yeah we should we should we should have taken over there we we should have put in an offer for control your narrative to oh yeah I to, think we, to control we control their them. control their ar like what is this like what is this like what oh it's a ponzi scheme apparently <laughs> this is all one big ponzi scheme guy Matt Guy is a football. Is he a punter? Guy Nation Matt Guy. Wait, who is ACL Matt Guy? Yeah, it's Cornhole. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Former horseshoe pitcher that switched over to Cornhole. American Cornholey? Oh my god! The best Cornhole player in the world, though. Jesus, guys. Tyson oh, Fury man. signed up for this? I, did he, though? Like, did he? Because there's a cornhole guys in this. Like, did I, I maybe Tyson Fury, Ric Flair, well, maybe Ric Flair, actually, that's something about yeah. right. And David Ortiz, Big Poppy, signed up for this. Matt, Matt, Matt Gay like, was Poppy. actually who I was thinking of, the kicker, Matt Gay. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> that's that's what I was like, wait, that's, that doesn't sound like <laughs> um, Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't. It, it sounds like a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They're gonna start. Yes. Hold on. It, it, is this AR or are they selling NFTs? Is that what this is? It, I, this is. Or are they just calling it's it a AR? Hologram. I don't even know how this works. Like, it's yeah, it, no Tyson Fury here. I, I don't know. Apparently, these guys have awful business managers. I mean, Ric Flair. We we assume, like you said. So, you said a party with the stars. Like, what do you do? Like. The, so if you buy the Ric Flair one day, so just you turn it on, and the next thing you just see him helicopter and stuff around, like just, <laughs> I said, it's, you know, it's like, like oh, the NFTs. Yeah, you get much money. It's like the NFTs. This package. It's like the NFTs. You get to pay, and it's yeah. it's like this hologram that just talks to you. It and you can like, only sometimes if you're hey, that, 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 you know, yeah. much. it's like the Deadpool oh, okay. thing I had back here, where you yeah. get a little app, and you could just make it say things to you, so you can creepily watch. A cornhole player on hologram. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck is this? Dude? Oh man. Um, okay. Tyson Fury. I, Someone needs to talk to Tyson Fury's manager because he's oh, that man. person's fucking Don King in disguise from the grave. Like um, that's what it is, man. Like these people know. are getting fucking. Jo- uh, uh, just wait two years. Signing up for it. Just wait sense. two years from now. For it makes sense. Two years from now, this is the biggest thing ever. Um, I want to be wrong. <laughs> uh, so uh, real quick, I wanted to say. I did. I got two nights confused. They were both Philly pay per views. That was Brock Lesnar, Kane, and Braun Strowman at the Royal Rumble. Um, it was the one Oscar won at the end, the 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 first women's one or whatever, or second women, whatever one women's one that was. But yeah, that was when Oscar won at the end of the night, and Ronda Rousey uh, showed up. One, two. Yeah, so that happened right before There's the so women's. Much hope that, night. that happened right before the women's that match with Kane and Strowman. And then it was actually a Money in the Bank was the one I was talking about with John Cena and Mark Henry. But they were oh. five years apart, I think it says. Just because to show you the difference. Yeah, 2013 was the Money in the Bank. 2018 was that Royal Rumble. Um, yeah, I just thought that was all the same night. It's just good to show you. It's all it's all jumbled. I'm getting old. I'd assume so um, as well. Like, that's kind of <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... Uh. Uh, yeah, so we got a lot out. People are dumb, and and when we mean people, we mean on one side, people who are upset because AEW did not spoon feed you with what yeah. that song was. They didn't prepare you for weeks for something that was supposed to be a surprise. You know, I, hey, they should have told us William Regal was coming, so I knew to watch. Like that's it's kind of the same stupid shit. Like it was a surprise not meant for the whole crowd and guess what no. the crowd got pumped you know why because the people who actually pay money to go to these events and show up from around the world are ones that either watched it before 
or has went back and watched a lot of ROH shit. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. those are the same people that go to all these pay-per-views. We'll go if they're in Philly or close by. I'm not traveling out to every pay-per-view. A lot of those people travel to every pay-per-view. Yeah. Because they they're, they're way more hardcore than we are when it comes to this stuff. And, and it seemed like more than enough of them there understood what was happening. Yeah. So, stop complaining. It was not meant for you. If you didn't understand, it was not meant for you. You understand afterwards. It was explained. That's all you need to know. The other yeah. side, um, the people running control of your narratives, bunch of idiots. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say, EC3, you gave me, you, you, you got me excited for this. I actually was not hoping for a wrestling company. I was hoping for, I was hoping for a Bullet Club, Club style group that showed up randomly to all these different events. And ran roughshod, and they didn't take roster mm-hmm. members from the shows. They just were all on contract work. You know what I mean? Like they just they got the you know, week by week payment from these places, and they it, almost like what Cardone is doing, where he's yeah. just kind of jumping around everywhere. Like that's what I, I just wanted a big fucking group to do that of like six guys just showing up, you know? And yeah. and, let's, and let's run roughshod this yeah. in your company. Yeah, too. and uh, helps you helps us. Yeah, and that's what I was hopeful for. And instead, we got another wrestling company. And then I was kind of excited because I'm like, you know what? It's different. I'm thinking, like, paid YouTube or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. okay, you're going to be on something like that where, like, it might be worth watching you guys. You know, it might be worth paying a little bit to see you. It's not on some subscription thing I've never heard of. Yeah. Where they made it sound like it was known. Uh, I've never heard of Pro Wrestling TV. They have holograms from some company that has no website. Um, it sounds it's like a Ponzi scheme. Yeah. I mean, uh, and and honestly, your first show is in a bar with a hundred people. Is <laughs> uh, your first show is supposed to be where people are excited? I don't think it's going to get better from here. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm with you on that one. I don't, I don't. Oof. I hope so. I guess for a lot of the talent, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I don't even. I, I didn't see Mecca's name on there, so I'm happy about that. Um, do it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that this all got in place and everything that happened, and he said no. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just going to uh, hope you know, that. I'm, really I'm gonna hope it was uh, more uh, his decision. Like this doesn't. I mean. And maybe and the funny thing is, it was supposed to be out about all these newbies, and then now they got all these ex WWE guys coming in here, um, taking up all the spots. And it's like, well, the whole point was to push unknowns, and you need some names. You get that. Yeah, yeah. But, like, I'd rather see a Mecca than, than a Weston Blake. Yeah. Like, I'm not excited yeah, to see, you know. So, and that's no. gotta be awkward for Killer Cross, right? He's associated with this in MLW. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And, but and and that's if he was even talking about MLW. I feel like he did like a Jim Cornette, and he just said a three-letter thing, not WWE, because he yeah. knew it was going to. A lot of people were going to shit themselves, and I feel like he purposely said things that could take in as AEW, GCW, and as MLW, just to kind of throw people off, because that's the only way they can get media i guess to talk about them is by adam share being an asshole so yeah. yeah um i'm tagging him all over this <laughs> no and then i'm giving him no, your, just bully us then i'm giving your address um <laughs> uh, uh yeah, so, yeah it's uh <laughs> hold on who do i not like um so, oh here we go so uh 3900 <laughs> um so yeah, it still comes to me actually. <laughs> so on on I mean I, I'm guessing that that's it, right? I mean we could oh, just yeah, sit no, here and show them for yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to be. We went about twenty minutes about extra. But it, you know what? I've controlled my narrative. Yeah, I. <sighs> it's disappointing. <laughs> it's disappointing. I I will say I will say this real quick before before we sign off, and it should only take me like forty five seconds to say it. I was very excited for the XFL when it came about. The XFL was fun to watch. I liked what they did. And it would have stuck around had it not been for COVID. Oh, yeah. Had it not been for COVID. It was something different. They put some hype behind it. Was it as good? No. But you're getting like the fifth best at positions in football. You got to understand it. I'm not expecting these to be 
excellent wrestling matches. You know what I mean? You have some good wrestlers. I'm expecting it to be a little sloppy with the camera work and shit like that. But you're literally, like, saying, we're a wrestling company that's only for the wrestlers. Watch us. Oh, yeah, fuck it, yeah. you if you like the wrestling you like. Because we're not that. And it's like, huh? We don't bully. But... What? <laughs> you're focusing. You're, you're literally trying to get me to watch and then telling me I'm an idiot for watching anything else. What the fuck do I want to watch your shit then? I'm yeah, not. No, uh, fuck you. I, I'd rather watch AEW. Like, I was I was going to watch you and AEW, not stop watching AEW. Like, I'd rather I was gonna, watch WWE. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I, 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 I agree. I, I would watch Impact. I'd watch WWE for 10 hours straight than to even give this company a shot right now because it just yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not even spending two seconds to watch a video I just no, not exactly. it's not worth my time now they, they just they proven that they I gave GCW a chance don't like it not for me I'd watch GCW and that's probably you, lower than those right now in my opinion because I don't like their announcers and I would watch GCW not on mute <laughs> before I watch control your narrative <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah go. yeah that, that's that's how we end it um sorry for those of you out there like gcw i don't it sucks um in my opinion my opinion sucks so I forgot to add that, yeah. yeah i always gotta add that i, I don't want to i don't care what you like I, and in the sense that i don't care what you like i'm not going to shit on what you like i like what i like i don't like gcw i don't like impact i don't like wwe i can understand why some people like them I there none of them for me. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so um on that note, um we uh we'll see you when we see you.